Hi, everyone. Good evening and welcome. We'll give everyone a few moments to join. Excited to have you here. Thanks for joining us. See a lot of familiar names in the chat or in the participants list and some new names as well. So thank you for joining us. I know we have many members from across the state of Florida and even outside as well. Again, we'll give everyone just a few more moments to join for our Families for Everglades Endangered Species in the Everglades. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started so we can make sure to end on time tonight. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us for our Families for Everglades Endangered Species in the Everglades. Tonight we're going to learn all about the many endangered and threatened species that call the Everglades home and how you can make a difference. So when you think of endangered and threatened species in the Everglades, what first comes to mind? Many will think about maybe the Florida panther, sea turtles, or maybe even the West Indian manatee. Uh, but what about some of the other animals? So tonight we're gonna go over what is an endangered species, what is a threatened species, why they're endangered or threatened in the Everglades, and what we can do to help. And after the presentation, we'll be sure to send you a follow-up email with plenty of information, resources, and links about what we talked about today and some great resources to help you. So before we dive in, we'll introduce who we are and what we do. Uh, so the Everglades Foundation is a nonprofit environmental organization that works to restore the Everglades through science, advocacy, and education. So we're here tonight, part of the Everglades Literacy Program, which is the education team. Uh, the Everglades Foundation was started in 1993 by two outdoor enthusiasts who were concerned by the health of the ecosystem. And so we're almost 30 years old and we're excited to share all of the information that we have. So here is the education team. Um, your host tonight is myself. I'm Kim Gooch. I'm the Everglades Literacy Program Coordinator located in Central Florida. And we're also joined tonight on this webinar by a few more members of our education team. They are happy to answer any questions that you have in the Q&A. So speaking of questions and speaking of the Q&A, uh, just a few housekeeping rules that we have for our webinar guidelines. So if you do have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, please use the Q&A to ask questions and one member from our education team will be happy to help you. We're also going to be utilizing polls for engagement and trivia questions throughout the evening. So make sure that you're paying attention. And that leads us to our first poll of the night. So on screen, I have a list of threatened or endangered species from around the world. I'm gonna launch a poll and you can guess which one you think lives in the Everglades. So I went ahead and launched the poll. So go ahead and answer. Which animal do you think lives in the Everglades? Is it the African elephant, the Sunda tiger, Hawksbill sea turtle, the Kita, or Eastern lowland gorilla? We'll give everyone a few moments. All 
Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and see the results. All right, so we had about 78% of participants say that the hopsbill sea turtle is the animal that lives in the Everglades. And you are correct. And we actually have five species of sea turtles that nest along Florida beaches. And we'll be sure to talk about that in just a little. So thank you everyone for participating. So let's first start off with some definitions about what an endangered and threatened species is. Uh, so at top, we have a federally endangered species. So that's gonna be at the federal level. Plants and animals that are, or soon to be, in danger of extinction, meaning gone forever, unless the species or its habitat is protected and managed for survival. We also have federally threatened species, which are plants and animals that are vulnerable to environmental changes. They could be declining in number at a rapid rate, or their range or habitat is decreasing at a rapid rate, and therefore they're very likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future. And then we have state designated threatened species. And so that's going to be the state of Florida. All federally listed species that occur in Florida are included on this list. In addition, the state also has a listing process to identify species that are not on the, the federal list, but are at risk of extinction in the state of Florida. So there are many other ways to classify threatened and endangered species, whether it's the Florida Imperiled Species List or the International Union for Conservation of Nature List, but we're gonna stick with the above for now. And of course, on screen, you may recognize this very popular threatened species. This is the West Indian manatee. So let's talk about endangered species in the Everglades. So there are actually many endangered and threatened species that call the Everglades home. In fact, 39 native Florida species that occur in Everglades National Park are federally listed as threatened or endangered, or they're candidates for being listed under the Endangered Species Act. It includes eight species of plants, six invertebrates, three fish, nine reptiles, 10 birds, and three mammals. Approximately 180 plant and animal species that occur in Everglades National Park are also listed by the state of Florida as threatened, endangered, or species of special concern. In fact, the Everglades ecosystem is incredibly diverse and home to at least 70 threatened and endangered species. Our state has the third highest number of endangered species in the United States, and that's third next to California and Hawaii. And a very popular endangered species in the Everglades that you see on screen is the Everglades snail kite. So they once ranged throughout Florida, but now they're limited to freshwater marshes of central and southern Florida and listed as an endangered species. In the 1960s, decades of draining the snail kite's marsh habitat reduced the population to no more than 25 individuals. But the population has rebounded, and it's believed that there's over 1,700 uh, that was reported in 2014. Snail kites feed on freshwater apple snails using that sharp beak that you can see in the photo. So there are many different reasons why animals are endangered or threatened, uh, but unfortunately in the Everglades ecosystem, a lot of it is because the Everglades has changed over time. And we can see these images here on the screen. Now half its original size, the remaining Everglades ecosystem still encompasses about 3 million acres. In the last 100 years, the Everglades has been altered, changing the natural flow of water. This negatively impacts native species in Florida, like Florida panthers, wading birds, and other animals that rely on the Everglades for their home, food, water, shelter, uh, and really um, everything for their habitat. Uh, unfortunately, many animals are endangered due to this habitat loss and water quality and quantity issues that the Everglades is now facing. Birds are no longer hunted for their feathers, but they're threatened due to environmental degradation. Florida panthers may not have enough space, and roads and neighborhoods are being built where the Florida panther used to live. That's why we're here. We're here to educate and also protect and restore America's Everglades for us and for animals too. So let's dive into a little bit more again to why these animals are endangered. Uh, and again, a lot of it relates to habitat loss and changing of the Everglades. So habitat loss or fragmentation, uh, uh, there was trees that were cut down, forests and wetlands that were changed. 
uh, which separates populations and reduces the gene pool. Also development. A lot of people moving to Florida, building homes, roads, schools, malls, and airports uh, in these habitats where the animals used to live. Hunting and poaching, not so much anymore, uh, but reptiles were hunted for their skins, birds for their feathers, mammals for their fur, uh, but many species are protected now. Of course, water quality and quantity. Altering the Everglades has created these water quality issues that can affect animals that live in the water or rely on the Everglades for their water supply. Pollution is a huge one. So not only plastics and trash, but also nutrient pollution like fertilizers, pesticides, and stormwater runoff. And of course, like we mentioned, changes to the Everglades that can seriously impact some animals. Two of the animals you see on screen, uh, we have the Key Largo wood rat, which is a federally designated endangered species. It's only found in the tropical hammocks of Key Largo, and its threat is habitat loss and fragmentation. They're also vulnerable to storms, fires, and sea level rise. You might not think of snails when you think of endangered species, but the Stock Island tree snail is a federally designated threatened species. They're endemic to Stock Island and Key West, and they even went extinct in its native range in 1992, but several small populations still remained. Its threat is increased urban development in its habitat, and pesticides can also extremely affect this animal. So with all of these different endangered and threatened species in the Everglades, why should we care? Well, a lot of it is these animal adaptations. They have to adapt to their changing environment. Uh, whether it's changing of habitats, sea level rise, and warming climates, it pushes these species into other animals that they may not be native to. Also, endangered plants are just as important. There's eight endangered species of plants in Everglades National Park, and they provide habitat for other endangered species like insects, reptiles, and more. Food chains are really important when it comes to the Everglades. Uh, these animals require a delicate balance between predator and prey, and species can be easily affected by extinction. For example, if the Florida panther were to go extinct, its prey, the white-tailed deer, could grow, eating the many bushes and shrubs that are food for other herbivores in the Everglades. Many species are endemic to the Everglades or to Florida, meaning that you can only see them here. For example, the Florida scrub jay only lives in the Florida scrub, the key deer only lives in the keys, and the Everglades is the only place where you can find both the American alligator and the American crocodile. This attracts visitors to the park every year and is important for South Florida's economy. Not to mention, many species in the Everglades are keystone species, meaning what they do helps other animals, and if they were to disappear, it could be really bad for the ecosystem. Many species are also indicator species, meaning they are the first to detect environmental issues. Both species on screen are example of these keystone species. American alligators are a state designated threatened species due to their similar appearance to the American crocodile. And their main threat is destruction and degradation of the wetland habitat. But alligators dig holes during the dry season in the Everglades, which provides refuge and water for other species, which can indicate restoration success. We also have the gopher tortoise, which is a threatened species in the state. Their threat is habitat loss through habitat destruction. Uh, but the goal of a Florida management plan is to maintain secure, viable populations throughout Florida. They're a keystone species because they create burrows that also shelter up to 350 other species, like burrowing owls, the threatened indigo snake, rabbits, gopher tortoise, and invertebrates. I hope you were paying attention because we have another trivia question that we're going to launch. So there's going to be three questions. The first one is, which species is a critically endangered species in the Everglades? Is it the Florida panther, the American alligator, or the Burmese python? Number two, where does Florida rank when it comes to invasive species? Is it first, second, third, or fourth, and that's within the United States. Number three, true or false, the Everglades snail kite now only lives in the freshwater marshes of central and southern Florida. So we'll give everyone a few moments to answer.
Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share the results. So we had 81% say the Florida panther, and that is correct. The Florida panther is a critically endangered species in the Everglades. The American alligator is threatened, and the Burmese python is an invasive species. Number two, Florida ranks third for the third uh, highest number of endangered species in the United States. Again, uh, in front of it is going to be California and Hawaii. And number three, the answer is true. The Everglades snail kite only lives in the freshwater marshes of central and southern Florida. Great job, everyone. And thank you for participating. So going back to some endangered Everglades animals, a lot of times when you think of these animals, you might think of some of the big ones, like the Florida panther, American crocodile, sea turtles, like the green sea turtle, Kemp's Ridley, hawksbill or leatherback, or even the West Indian manatee. Today, we'll be diving into the different insects, reptiles, fish, mammals, and birds that are endangered or threatened in the Everglades, like this wood stork, for example. The wood stork is a federally designated threatened species, and they're the only species of stork that nests in North America, including hardwood swamps, sloughs, mangroves, and cypress stones. South Florida's population had collapsed due to changes to the Everglades water flow, and they're currently protected by the U.S. Migratory Bird Treaty Act. So not many people think of insects when they think of endangered or threatened species, but the Everglades is actually home to quite a few. One of them is the Bartram's Scrub Hair Streak Butterfly. They are federally endangered and they are endemic to South Florida and can only be found in the pine rocklands that support the host plant, which is the pine lin croton. Their pri primary threat is habitat loss and fire suppression. We also have, excuse me, we also have the Schwass Swallowtail Butterfly, also an endangered species. Uh, they used to extend from Miami all the way to Matacum Key, but now they're primarily found in tropical hardwood hammocks in Biscayne Bay National Park and North Key Largo. Another important species is the Miami tiger beetle. They are found exclusively in the pine rocklands. There's only two known populations found in Miami-Dade County, and they're both surrounded by urban development. Their habitat has been nearly eliminated and there's less than 2% of the pine rocklands that remain in Miami-Dade County. What's interesting is that these beetles help maintain that balance in the Everglades ecosystem by controlling smaller insect populations like the mosquito. So we definitely need the Miami tiger beetle. We also have the Miami blue butterfly. They are federally endangered and they can be found along South Florida's edges of tropical hardwood hammocks, beachside scrub, and occasionally the pine rocklands. Their primary host plant is the knicker bean, but the invasive species, the green iguana, will actually eat the knicker bean. So that's why it's important to maintain and to manage those invasive species. Surviving populations occur in Key West National Wildlife Refuge and Bahia Honda State Park. Their threats include habitat loss, fragmentation, and pesticides. They were actually thought to be extinct in the 1980s, but they were rediscovered in 1999. You can also see three more blue butterflies on screen. That's the Casillas blue butterfly, Serenus blue butterfly, and the Knickerbean blue butterfly, and they're all threatened due to similar appearance to the Miami blue butterfly. Of course, we also have many species of reptiles that call the Everglades home. Uh, the first that comes to mind is the American crocodile. They are federally listed as threatened, and they live in coastal areas in the Caribbean in South Florida uh, in brackish or saltwater mangrove swamps. They were historically hunted for their hides, uh, but habitat destruction is a primar primarily threat now, as well as hydrological alterations in their habitat. Uh, which is really detrimental to their eggs as they cannot withstand conditions that are too wet or too dry. You might not think of snakes, uh, but the Eastern indigo snake is actually a federally designated threatened species in the Everglades. They live in pine flatwoods, hardwood hammocks, and moist hammocks, and they use gopher tortoise burrows for their eggs. Their main threat is habitat destruction, fragmentation, and degradation of urban development. You'll also notice on screen that we have three of the five species of sea turtles that nest along South Florida beaches in the Everglades. Four 
of the species in the Everglades are listed as endangered, but they're all protected in the Everglades ecosystem. We have the hawksbill sea turtle, they're endangered. It's actually the rarest species of sea turtle that regularly occurs in Florida. And they're found on the reefs in the Florida Keys and Atlantic coast. And their main threat is accidental capture in fishing nets, development of nesting beaches and artificial lights. So if you've ever heard about lights out for sea turtles, it's really important for uh, if you have a home or a condo or if you're at a hotel on the beach to turn off lights because when sea turtles hatch, they're gonna migrate toward it's the light, uh, which should be the moon in the ocean. So it's always important to turn off those artificial lights during sea turtle nesting season. We also have the green sea turtle and Florida hosts one of the largest groupings of sea turtle in the Western Atlantic. Their main threat is entanglement in fishing gear as well as increased beach development and other threats include predation on eggs, hit by watercraft and habitat de degradation from oil spills. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle is the smallest species of sea turtle and is the most endangered in the world. They're only found in parts of Mexico, South Texas, and South Florida beaches. Their main threat is accidental capture, uh, but a great way that commercial fishing is helping is by using turtle excluder devices. And again, it's really important um, because their threat is a lot of human presence on the beach. And also on screen, we have the adorable blue-tailed mole skink. They are federally designated threatened and they need loose sand for burrowing. So they can be found in those sand hill hammocks, oak and pine scrubs, and they're actually found along the Lake Wales Ridge in Florida. Uh, but they're very vulnerable because their limited range is susceptible to natural or environmental catastrophes. We also can't forget to talk about fish that live in the Everglades. Uh, so there are many species of fish that live in the coastal waters of the Everglades, and the two on screen are considered to be endangered or threatened. The small tooth sawfish is federally designated endangered. Of the seven species of sawfish, it's the only one found in Florida. Historical threats include unintentional overfishing, trophy fishing, and habitat destruction, and they're reduced to a very small population off Florida's coast. Uh, but unfortunately, development along Florida's coast has caused damage to mangrove forests that serve as a nursery area for juveniles. But the Everglades National Park serves as a critical habitat for them. You can actually participate in some citizen science projects and report small tooth sawfish sightings uh, with the Florida Fish and Wildlife. And we'll send you some resources for that in our follow-up email. Also on screen, we have the Nassau grouper. Uh, they're federal, they are designated threatened due to commercial and recreational fishing and reef destruction. And they're found along the coastal waters in South Florida. They're highly vulnerable to over harvesting. And again, the Everglades National Park is a critical habitat for these species. So here's just a glimpse of some of the resources that we have for insects, reptiles, and fish in the Everglades. We have a couple of reading comprehension uh, passages uh, that were written by our ecologist on staff and some comprehension questions. We also have a CITES website scavenger hunt, as well as a sea turtle interview video activity worksheet uh, with the Miami-Dade County Sea Turtle Conservation Program. There are a few videos about the small tooth sawfish by NOAA Fisheries uh, that discuss how they're protecting the small tooth sawfish in Southwest Florida. And you can even see on the map, uh, you can report the, sawtooth saw, the small tooth sawfish sightings that you see in your area. Moving on to birds, there are many species of endangered or threatened birds that visit the Everglades or might live here permanently or just stop by during the winter. Uh, on the screen, we have the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. They're an endangered species that can only be found in Everglades National Park and Big Cypress National Preserve. They're the only bird that's restricted to the Everglades ecosystem and they have not been seen in Cape Sable since the 1970s. They're threatened due to habitat destruction and also improper water regimes in the Everglades can cause delays and termination of nesting. That's one of the reasons why Everglades restoration is so important to the species because they're considered the Goldilocks bird of Everglades restoration. They need the water to be just right. 
On screen, we also have the piping plover. They're a threatened species that spend their winters here in Florida, and they inhabit sandy beaches, sand flats, and mud flats, and their threats to habitat loss and development on beaches, as well as disturbance from humans and domestic animals. We also have the red cockaded woodpecker. They're an endangered species. They inhabit slash longleaf and loblolly pines. In fact, in the late 1800s, longleaf pines were logged for lumber, uh, which caused a decline in the species. They're protected by the United States Migratory Bird Treaty Act, as well as the Endangered Species Act. And there's a great partnership between landowners. In fact, landowners have a legal obligation to protect these birds and habitats. This freezes the landowner's responsibilities as long as the owner agrees to restore, enhance, or create habitats that benefit this, these, this species. Uh, a really neat bird to Florida is the Florida scrub jay. They're a threatened species and they're the only species of bird that is endemic to the state of Florida, meaning they only live here. They inhabit the sand pine and oak scrub, scrubby flatwoods, which occur in the highest and driest areas of Florida. Of course, their threats are habitat destruction and fragmentation, and few scrub jays are able to travel between patches of suitable habitat. So these small populations are at risk of disappearing because of their lack of connectivity. And prescribed burning is also essential to conserving the scrub jay. You have the roseate tern. They're a threatened species. They nest in broken coral deposits, bare limestone, and sandy beaches. Uh, unfortunately, their main threat is human disturbance during nesting, as well as seagulls. The gull's aggressive nature can actually cause the tern to evacuate their nests. We have a neat resources from Florida Fish and Wildlife that talks about living with shorebirds and how we can help. And also on screen, a bird that is near and dear to the Everglades ecosystem is the Rosette Spoonbill. They're a state designated species, a uh, state designated threatened species, and they're the only spoonbill endemic to the Western hemisphere. A historical threat was hunting for their feathers. That practice is now illegal, which has allowed the population to rebound. In Florida Bay, the increased freshwater flow from the Everglades actually affects the availability of prey for the spoonbill, another reason why sending water south to the Everglades is so important. And of course, we can't forget to talk about the many mammals that call the Everglades home. You have the Florida bonneted bat, which is an endangered species, the largest species of bat in Florida, and they're thought to be extremely rare, only occurring in a handful of counties in South Florida and have one of the most restrictive ranges. They forage in semi-tropical forests with tropical hardwood, pineland, and mangrove habitats, and you can even find them sometimes in man-made areas like golf courses and neighborhoods. Their threats are loss of habitat, destruction of roost sites, and natural disasters. We talked about it before, but we have the West Indian manatee. Uh, the Florida manatee is a subspecies and they inhabit coastal waters, rivers and springs, and they have to migrate to warmer waters during the winter. The population has grown to just under uh, 7,520 animals today, and they were actually reclassified from endangered to threatened in May of 2017. They're considered one of the state's keystone species because they can alert researchers to the environmental and habitat changes in Florida waterways. Their threats include collisions with boats, entanglement in fishing line, cold stress, and seagrass die-off due to algae blooms. Uh, even though they're not endangered anymore, they're still protected by the Endangered Species Act, as well as the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Florida Manatee Sanctuary Act, um, as well as the uh, Florida laws and rules and regulations. On screen, we also have the Florida panther. They're a designated endangered species. They only occur primarily south of Orlando, and they rely on forested areas that provide a dense understory vegetation for rest, den sites, and stocking cover. Their threats are urban sprawl and the loss of land due to commercial development. Unfortunately, they're restricted to about 5% of their historical range, and they require a lot of space. Males need about 200 square feet per panther, and other threats include collisions with automobiles, disputes with other panthers, inbreeding, disease, and environmental toxins. On screen, we also have the key deer. They're an endangered species, smallest species of white-tailed deer, and they're threatened due to habitat alteration due to urban development. 
Their range includes 26 islands in the Florida Keys and then can actually swim from one key to the next. Their numbers fell to less than 50 in the 1940s, uh, but their current numbers are estimated to be anywhere from 700 to 800 deer. Uh, the National Key Deer Re Refuge was established in 1957 to protect and preserve the key deer as well as other wildlife resources in the Florida Keys. And speaking of the Florida Keys, you have the Key Largo cotton mouse, another endangered species in the tropical hardwood hammocks uh, that are threatened due to fragmentation and vulnerable to tropical storms and hurricanes. Trash dumping from humans also leads to an increased population of black rats, which are competing for their natural resources. And then we have the Everglades mink. Uh, not many people know that the Everglades mink actually lives here in Florida. They're state listed as threatened and they inhabit Southern Florida and the shallow freshwater marshes of the Everglades and Big Cypress. Uh, and their threats are human development as that continues. And what's interesting is that modifications to the wetlands such as drainage, logging, construction, fire and pesticides are all additional threats as well as increased exotic vegetation and other invasive species like the Burmese python will actually eat the Everglades mink. And here is a screenshot of this of the amazing resources on birds and mammals that we'll be sure to send you in our follow up email. Uh, we have a great article from the Everglades Foundation about 10 things you didn't know about Florida manatees and where to find them, the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow comprehension questions. Uh, one of our educa education team members did an interview with a Florida Panther specialist from the uh, FWC, and we have an interview video and a worksheet. Our fourth grade Wanted Alive lesson has students create a poster on threatened or endangered species, and we'll also share our fifth grade lesson on Florida Panthers. And then we have our Save Our Species reading comprehension questions uh, with some more uh, facts and uh, questions about endangered species. That was a lot of information. So we're gonna go ahead and test you on a very popular endangered species, which is the Florida Panther. So here's a fun trivia question that I will launch. So three questions on screen. Number one, what percentage of the Florida Panthers historic habitat range are the Panthers currently restricted to? Is it 17%, 5%, 12% or 2%? Number two, how much land does one Florida Panther need? 200 square miles, 100 square miles, 75 square miles or 50? And then approximately how long do Florida Panthers live in the wild? 10 years, five years, 12 years, or 30 years? Excellent. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So unfortunately, it's actually only 5% of the Florida Panthers historic habitat range are the Panthers currently restricted to. So that's really not a lot if you think about it, especially since they require so much space. A male Florida Panther needs about 200 square miles. And Florida Panthers live for quite a long time. They can actually approximately live up to 12 years in the wild. So that's a long, lot of time and a lot of space needed for the Florida Panther. So that's why it's so important to protect the Everglades. So over the years, many people have realized that these plants and animals are beautiful and very important to the Everglades and the Florida ecosystem, and many legislative acts were passed to protect these species. You have the Endangered Species Act of 1973, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act of 1940, the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1973, the Florida Manatee Sanctuary Act of 1978, Florida's Marine Turtle Protection Act of 1991, and then Florida Fish and Wildlife has many specific species action plans that are guide actions for Florida specific species that address an individual needs. 
Two additional animals we have on screen are the burrowing owl. They are a state designated threatened species and they inhabit open prairies in Florida with very little understory. And sometimes that means golf courses, airports, pastures, fields, and vacant lots. Uh, and their threat is continued loss of habitat. And then we also have the Florida pine snake. They are also a state designated threatened species and they like to live in well-drained sandy soils with moderate to open canopy. And habitat loss is an issue because they live in the pine lands. So by 1987, 88% of that pine scrub habitat in Florida was lost to development. Uh, because this species is rare, you can actually participate in another citizen science project by reporting this snake species to the Florida Fish and Wildlife. And again, we'll send you that resource in the follow-up email. So it's good to know in Florida that it's not always doom and gloom. There's actually a few species or a few animals that were endangered at some point, but now their numbers are thriving. And one of them is the Florida black bear. Historically, they occurred throughout the state, but experienced a severe reduction prior to the mid 20th century due to habitat loss. When their habitat is fragmented, bears can encounter more roads, people, and human food sources. Uh, and these fragmented habitats limited how they disperse to new areas, which can really eliminate their gene pool or uh, genetic diversity. They were a threatened species from 1974 to 2012, uh, but due to conservation efforts of federal and state agencies, local governments, nonprofits, residents, and businesses, the Florida black bear made a recovery and they are no longer listed as a threatened species, but they are still protected in the state of Florida. Now there is estimated to be over 4,000 black bears occupying about 49% of their historic range in Florida. And there's some great resource, resources that will send you about living with black bears in Florida. A very popular comeback story that you may or may not know is the bald eagle. And the bald eagle loves to nest in the tall trees of the Everglades. Unfortunately, bald eagle populations declined in the early uh, 20th century due to loss of habitat. And even during the 50s and 60s, the use of pesticides, especially DDT, became a major pro problem. This uh, DDT pesticide accumulated in fish, which is a huge food source for the eagles, and it caused the thinning of their eggshells. DDT is now banned in the United States and the bald eagle was removed from the endangered species list in 2007 and 2008. The eagle is still protected under the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. And what's great to know is that Florida has one of the densest concentrations of nesting bald eagles in the lower 48 states with an estimated of 1500 nests. And another comeback story is the American alligator. So we know that now they're considered a state threatened, uh, in state threatened species due to similarity of appearance to the American crocodile, but they were actually listed as an endangered species in 1967 uh, due to hunting and poaching for their skin. Habitat loss continues to be a major threat and because they're an important species to the Everglades and act as ecosystem engineers, new laws were created in the 70s to protect the alligator. They've been removed from the endangered species list in 1987, but they're still protected in the state of Florida. All right, we have our last set of trivia questions. Uh, so hopefully you're able to answer these and see if you learned anything. First question, what factors contribute to the Everglades animals being endangered or threatened? Habitat loss, pollution, changes to the Everglades watershed or all of the above. Where can key deer be found? Miami, Orlando, the Florida Keys, or the Sawgrass Marsh? And what can we do to help protect endangered and threatened species? Follow rules and regulations, reduce, reuse, and recycle, learn more, or all of the above. Excellent. We have a lot of participation in this one. Hopefully, hopefully everyone knows some of these answers. All right, I'm going to end the poll and share the results. 
So number one, what factors contribute to the Everglades animals being endangered or threatened? Technically, all of them are correct because the right answer is all of the above. And we'll talk about, uh, or we talked about habitat loss, pollution, as well as changes to the Everglades watershed. Where can key deer be found? Uh, the answer is actually in the name. They can be found in the Florida Keys. And what can we do to help protect endangered and threatened species? All of the answers are correct. It is, we can follow rules and regulations, reduce, reuse, recycle, learn more, or all of the above. So here are some simple things that we can do to help. And again, we'll be sure to share with this information uh, with you in the follow-up email. We can uh, follow rules and regulations. These are some really simple solutions, uh, like following speed limits on boats to help manatees, speed limits on highways to look out for panthers, lights out for sea turtles, reduce, reuse, and recycle, so less plastic and pollution ends up in our Everglades. And we can plant native species that provide uh, that critical habitat for other endangered species. Everglades restoration is super important. Uh, as we mentioned, the Everglades is home to more than 70 threatened or endangered species. There are many citizen science projects that you can help out with, like reporting sightings of these threatened or endangered species, gathering the survey information, and sharing with others. And of course, we encourage you to learn more. The more we know about threatened or endangered species, the more we can protect them. Maybe you learned about a new animal today that you want to learn more about and you can uh, share with your family and friends. And of course, there are other threats to the Everglades as well. Uh, so we talked a lot about habitat loss and how it's a serious threat to the Everglades. And many of it comes from the way that the Everglades was changed. Uh, so other threats that affect threatened or endangered species in the Everglades include overconsumption and water quality and quantity issues from changing the Everglades. Really, we all need clean, fresh water, and a lot of that comes from the Everglades. So as you can see in the image, uh, unfortunately, we are, due to changes to the Everglades watershed, we are pushing dirty plumes of polluted water from Lake Okeechobee to our coastal estuaries on the west uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and the east in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, this can unfortunately cause a toxic blue-green algae bloom. Uh, we see exacerbated red tide, uh, and it can really affect those coastal estuaries, which includes the plants and animals that live there. This is fresh water that could filter through the Everglades watershed and could filter down to the Everglades National Park and Florida Bay. Because that fresh water is not making its way down into Florida Bay or Everglades National Park, we're seeing a thirsty and disconnected Everglades National Park, as well as a hypersaline or very salty Florida Bay, uh, which can affect the animals as well. Uh, so we're seeing uh, overconsumption, again, just because many people are living here in Florida and using a lot of our water resources. Uh, so that's why we're here today to discuss Everglades restoration uh, and how it's important to all of us, not just, um, you know, humans, but the plants and animals that consider the Everglades home. So we we'll leave you with some next steps and some great ways uh, that you can share this information. Uh, we'll provide for you some great Everglades resources, links, and lessons about threatened or endangered species. Uh, we encourage you to learn more and protect the Everglades uh, so we can provide habitat uh, for those threatened or endangered species that call the Everglades home, as well as learning more. Again, the more we know, the more we can share with others to protect and restore the Everglades. Uh, we want to mention, again, uh, we are the Everglades Literacy Program, the education team of the Everglades Foundation. Uh, many of uh, the resources that we offer, including our family nights, uh, but we also have our free standards aligned K-12 interdisciplinary curriculum, additional instructional resources, and free virtual and in-person Everglades Literacy teacher trainings, classroom presentations, and field trip opportunities, as well as community partners throughout the state of Florida. So we'll send you some information on our program, uh, but you can certainly learn more on our website, evergladesliteracy.org. And I'll leave you uh, with one of my favorite quotes that I think sums up our presentation today. In the end, we will conserve only what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. 
Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, the many endangered or threatened species that call the Everglades home and why it's so important to protect and restore the Everglades. Uh, I'll stick around if you have any other questions. Uh, again, we'll be sure to send you the recording of the webinar and uh, some of the information that we talked about in the follow-up email. Uh, but I hope you have a great rest of your night and thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.